Hello YouTube and today we are going to flash the firmware and the bootloader on your Creality Ender 3. Most people to flash a bootloader use an Arduino Uno or similar device, I use something slightly different. We use this thing, this is called a USB ASP. This end goes into your computer, this end plugs into your motherboard directly and then you flash the bootloader, you then remove that cable, you then connect your printer to your computer using a standard USB cable and then you are able to flash any firmware you wish. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I've borrowed this picture from the Skynet instructions. I'll leave a link in the description to a download for that. Uh, you can see here that the adapter, this is the top of your board, so this is the case. So the adapter has the MISO, the SCK and the RST to the bottom which means the VCC, the MOSI and the ground is to the top. So that is how you plug it in. So after removing the three screws that hold the top of your case on, you need to locate the six pin port, which is there next to the ribbon cable for your screen. And that is where you're going to plug your USB ASP into. So it's simply a matter of plugging the cable in like so and if you have your other end connected into a USB port on your computer you will see that the board now makes the screen come on as it is now being powered through the 5 volt USB coming through the USB ASP now the next thing we need to do is to make sure that you have the correct drivers for the USB ASP and that is a very simple system which we will go through now. So to make sure you have the correct drivers you need to go to this website. I will leave a link to this in the description and download this handy installer. Once this is downloaded So once that has downloaded, just execute it. Go to device, options, list all devices, and then you'll see USB ASP. There may well be something in the driver box already, but that's the driver that we need. So just click replace driver. So that is now the correct driver in place for the USB ASP. You can now close that window and now you can connect the USB ASP to your motherboard and start the bootloader flashing process straight away. So once that driver is updated and you have your USB ASP connected, you can then go back to the files that you downloaded, which either package of the two it was and there will be a copy of Arduino. So you open Arduino up. Go to tools. Now you need to check that your board is the Sanguino 1284P. Your processor is the AT Mega 1284 or the AT Mega 1284P. Make sure you're connected to the correct COM port, which will now um, recognize the USB ASP. Make sure that your programmer is set to USB ASP from the list. Go down to bootloader and click burn bootloader. It will do it. It will say that it's done burning it and that it's finished. And don't panic at this stage if you look at your printer and your screen is blank. This is entirely normal. Don't panic and think everything has gone wrong everything is fine we will now move to the next step so at this stage you can now remove your USB ASP you can put that to one side that is no longer needed now and then you connect your computer to your printer through the USB port on the front like I say do not panic if the screen comes up blank like this you can see no data on it. Do not panic. Everything is absolutely fine. We'll go back into Arduino now and we'll now flash the firmware. 
So now we return to your firmware package. Open Arduino. Click File. Click Open. Find your firmware directory. Scroll down until you find the firmware. It will be an INO file. It might not necessarily be called firmware. It depends which package you download. But it will be the INO file and it will have the little Arduino icon next to it. So we open that. That opens the second window. And then we just need to go into the configuration H file across the top, that tab there. This is the only file you will ever need to alter. We will scroll down until we find the section for the end of three. And we will define the end of three. Now on my firmware it is already defined. On yours, when you go to it, it will look like that, which is undefined. So all you do to define the firmware to be for the end of three is to remove those two forward slashes. You see that the word define changes colour and that means it is now set as the end of three firmware. Now, like I say, in another video we'll do about auto bed levelling. There are settings for that in the configuration H file for changing the bootloader picture on your machine, that kind of thing. But at the moment we're just interested in getting the firmware flashed. So we know we're in end of three. We go up to tools. We check the board is still set as the Sanguino 1284P, that the processor is the AT Mega 1284 as it was before, or the AT Mega 1284P. The COM port will have changed. The COM port 1 will have been for when you're using the USB ASP. I'm now on COM port 3. So just check that and make sure you've definitely got it on the right port. The programmer wants to be set to AVRISP Mark II. Okay. So when you opened yours, it may have well said USB ASP still. So you want to make sure that you change it to that. The AVRISP Mark II. So once you've done that, you want to go to verify. This will verify and compile the firmware and check that the, the firmware will compile correctly. Now this will take some time, so while it's doing that, we will just pause the video. And there we are. It has completed the compiling and is ready to upload. So we go to the upload arrow, click it. It does a quick recompile of the sketch, but that will take very little time as it already has held a compiled version in memory. And once it's happy with the compiled sketch, it will then to start to upload the firmware. And there you are, you see it writing the firmware. Happily writing away. It's now reading to check and verify that it's actually transferred all the data across. And once it's finished reading the data, it says it is done, it says it is updating, the machine reboots, And there you have it. You have now uploaded the firmware to your machine. And it's as simple as that. Your firmware is now flashed. In a later video, we will discuss what you need to alter in your firmware for when you fit an ABL sensor. But for now, thank you very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. You can hit the little bell, which means you'll get notifications of when I next put a video out. You can support me on Patreon or through Streamlabs in the link in the description. But for now, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.